But the devil and his angels can't be saved. I said the devil and his angels can't be saved. Give me the book of Jude. Jude is right next to Revelation. Only have one chapter. I want to show you where those angels are. The preachers said that the angels that came out of heaven is walking around the earth knocking up women making babies. I said lie out of hell. I lie came so far out of hell I wonder how it got out but it's out and we want to beat it back in. Hey guys before we continue I found that 93% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos populated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get right to it. Yeah, them angels ain't making no babies, man making babies. <laughs> I got to admit, man is devilish, but that rascal, <laughs> he, he, he ain't going around. Oh, hey, man, the angels ain't going around making no babies. How is it possible that legions of demons can enter one man? We know that the Holy Scriptures exhibits covenants and curses, and demons are described as administers of curses. And a curse is a type of covenant. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5 says, by his stripes we are healed, because he was wounded for our transgressions. But first, let's gain an understanding of the predicament men faced prior to Christ shedding his blood for our sins. I'm going to show you where the fallen angels are right now. In the book of Jude, chapter 1 and at verse 6. That's what? And the angels which kept not their first The estate. angels which kept not their first estate, their first place. Their first place were holy. Uh -huh. But left their own habitation. Left their own dwelling place. He have reserved. God have reserved. In everlasting chains under darkness. Wait a minute. Yeah. Where are they? In everlasting chains under darkness. Where are the fallen angels? He have reserved in everlasting chains under darkness. They're not loose. No. That's right. No, no. Everlasting chains. They're not loose. Under the law of Moses. People were stoned to death because that was the only way to cast the demon out in killing the human host. But the only way demons can possess humans is through blood covenants. This is one of the reasons why fornication is a sin, because life is in the blood. And the fallen angels tainted the bloodlines, creating demonic offspring by doing what is not fitting in mating with the daughters of men. Therefore, fallen angels by possessing men through their bloodlines, it's what provoked men to sin. And the more a man sins, the more things were taken away from us. For example, our life was cut by 90%. Okay, once upon a time we were able to intermarry into bloodlines, there was a benefit of marrying into bloodlines because you were not dealing with the familiar. You were more dealing with someone who was related to you. Okay, so sin in itself was a penalty for man. man God no longer permitted man to marry in the bloodlines. Man would have to go off and marry a stranger of another man's bloodline because of sin. I don't know if you guys catch that. Okay, again, as I stated in other videos, the serpent has a seed. So oh, man would literally be risking intermarrying with someone who had a higher concentration of the serpent seed in their bloodlines. This is why God commanded the children of Israel not to marry the Canaanite women. Okay, but that's a whole other video. They are in reserve. Yes. And everlasting chains Wait a minute. darkness. How long them chains last? Everlasting chains. Well, I don't read where parole going to be given there. <laughs> That's right. Everlasting, Everlasting is perpetual. Everlasting chains. Under the Blind darkness. infidels, the angels walking around knocking up women. No, that's you. <laughs> In Genesis chapter 3, we learn that Eve is cursed with a perpetual impurity, a loss of blood. And the serpent, again, has a seed. This is the, 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 the offspring of this union between the serpent and Eve. There are many things. There are many penalties for sin to this day that we just overlook. Okay. The scriptures say the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, that's exactly what he did. Okay. When he entered into the woman and created a seed for himself, cursing man's bloodlines. Okay. That's how we get blindness. You get joined twins. Uh, deafness, okay, the child has defects, 
there are so many different things and impurities that came into man's bloodline that we witness still to this day. You see what I'm saying? The skin pigmentation is another thing. Okay, I have to talk about that in a whole other video. The scriptures state that when, when God created man, everything was good. His skin pigmentation, he was, he was more compatible with the sun. Okay, leprosy is a curse. Okay, and nations lost their skin pigmentation because of the curse of the fallen angels coming into man's bloodline. All right, again, the scriptures say, the serpent has a seed. Okay, so the, the languages were scattered. The animals turned on man. So many things that, that happened that are the offspring of sin. Again, man's lifespan was cut. Adam at one point was immortal prior to sin. Okay, then we know that Adam lived to be 900 plus years. Okay, 6,000 years later, man's life has been cut by at least 90, 95%. OK, this is the penalty of sin. So for those of you who are talking about polygyny and, you know, having multiple wives, this is why you cannot have multiple wives anymore. God had cut a covenant with Abraham under the law with, with Moses, under the law of Moses. OK, the, uh, the Torah, the where if they're going to have multiple wives, Okay, now we're going to have to have all these other laws to keep man pure, to keep them holy. You see what I'm saying? Because 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 18 says, he who commits fornication sins against his own body. So this all stemmed from the serpent having a seed. In John chapter 8, verse 44, it says, uh, Christ says to the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, who was a murderer from the beginning. So the devil became a father and a murderer in the garden. But many preachers run over these scriptures. Again, in order for demons to possess men, they need a blood covenant. Although they can also enter through the things we speak, because Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says the power of life and death is in the tongue. Okay, we know that they can enter through the eyes because. Matthew chapter 6, 22 says the lamp of the body is the eye. Okay, and if your, your eye is good and it's full of light, if it's, if it's bad, it's full of darkness. Okay, the darkness is demon possession. All right, 1 Corinthians 15, 33 says evil communication corrupts good habits. So those of you wondering how did Adam get cursed, because obviously he was not afflicted with a perpetual period of blood loss like Eve. Okay, but that's a whole other video. In regards to Eve, though, the serpent murdered her by putting his seed into her and accelerating death for the woman because Eve was immortal as well prior to the whole ordeal, which was fornication. You see what I'm saying? So in John chapter 8, verse 44, Christ said to the Pharisees, you are of your father, the devil, because coverage under the blood of Jesus demands that you be born again by faith in Jesus Christ and repentance for the remission of sins. And obviously the Pharisees, they wanted no part of that. Therefore, their sin remains because the devil is the father who corrupted the bloodline of men. He corrupted their DNA. That's why Christ said that to them. Okay, Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says Christ purchased the church with his own blood. Now, although Mark chapter 16, verse 17 says demons may be cast out in the name of Jesus. Well, what about those who use the name, but they don't live right? Okay, the demons aren't going anywhere if you don't live right. Okay, they said the name, but the blood does not cover them like the blood covered the children of Israel. Under the Passover, okay, the demons had to pass over because they put, they literally put blood on the doorpost. Okay, in the New Testament, we are the temple of God. So the blood of Jesus is on our spiritual doorpost. Okay, the spirit is a spiritual covenant, but the blood is spiritual because life is in the blood. 
So again, under the law of Moses, demons had to pass over because under that covenant, animal blood was spread on the door doorposts of the Israelites. In the Apocrypha, Tobit, T-O-B-I-T, chapter 6, verse 16 and 17, it breaks down how a demon smelled the live ashes of incense that was laid upon the heart and the liver of the fish. And the demon fled away. Why? Because one may use the name of Jesus and the demon flees, but the demon can come back with several more foul spirits. So Tobit chapter 6 verse 17 says the demon will never return again once a sacrifice is made. Okay, well, Christ made the sacrifice with his blood for us. So pleading the blood of Jesus is remission for sins. Demons eat and thirst off of sin. Okay, they cannot inhabit human vessels that do not practice sin. That's different from demons being around you. Okay, demons can can tempt men to sin, which someday can lead to demon possession, but they are only going to get there through access to man's blood. So therefore, Christ had to counter that curse in shedding of his blood. Okay, God is a just God. The same way they enter, the same way they can be cast out, but there has to be righteousness sacrificed for our sake for us to even be eligible to be under the covenant of blood of Jesus. Okay, and that's keeping your temple pure. All right, but if your temple is not pure, then demons can possess. All right, so it's not just the name of Jesus that cast out devils. It's also the blood of Jesus. All right, and that's the ABCs of demon possession.